Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. So today we're going to be talking about expected goal flow charts and doing the tutorial on them. So these are really helpful for looking at kind of the flow of the game, seeing where the shots took place, how quality of a shot it was, and kind of diving a little bit more into expected goals. So expected goals, if you don't know, this is just a way of measuring the quality of a shot. And this is based on a lot of different things such as, you know, the location of the shot, the position of the defenders, the attackers, as well as a couple of different things such as like the foot that they used, if that's their stronger weak foot. I mean, there's a ton of things that go into it. But if you're more interested in expected goals, I recommend picking up a book similar to this one right here, The Expected Goals Philosophy. I read it. It's pretty good if you don't really know what expected goals is. Um, there's a link in the description below. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to do the tutorial. I recommend going and checking out the GitHub page for that has all this, and you can download that and follow along. As well as if you like this video, be sure to hit like, and as well as subscribe to the channel. I come out with a bunch of tutorials, as well as talking about Python, data science, coding in general. So without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so in the tutorial, we're gonna start off in Jupyter Notebooks. If you're unfamiliar with it, I recommend checking out one of the other videos where I explain how to install Jupyter Notebooks, but I like using Jupyter because it allows us to do a couple of things and kind of test our code bit by bit. So what we're gonna do is we're first going to import the packages and then we're going to read in the CSV, the CSV with the data. So the CSV, this has understat data that I scraped and I just put it into a CSV to make this easier. Um, you can get data for XG from places like understat, statsbomb, yscout, or opta, depending if you're paying or if you're not paying. But what I recommend is just following along with this tutorial and then getting it set up and checking out my other video that has the understat data scraping tutorial and you'll kind of understand how this is all going down. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to import the packages we're going to be using. We're actually going to be using three in this tutorial. So we're just going to import pandas as PD and as well we're going to use matplotlib. So we're going to say import matplotlib as MPL and then as well we're going to import import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. So those are the only three packages that we're going to be using in this tutorial. We'll run it and then we're going to create a data frame. Oops. And I cannot spell once again, another tutorial where I can't spell. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to read in our data frame using pandas. We're going to read in the CSV. So we'll say DF, so data frame equals pd.read underscore csv and then in quotations we're just going to put xg it's called xg tutorial dot csv um, make sure that this file is in the same location on your computer as the jupyter notebook or if you're hosting it somewhere else or if you have it somewhere else make sure the file path is correct so we'll do that and so this is what our data frame looks like this is actually a data frame that is going to contain a game from between Southampton and Bournemouth back, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right, Bournemouth, Bournemouth. But this is from back in 2019. I was just looking for games that had a lot of shots and a lot of goals, a lot of XG. So this is one from 2019 between Southampton and Bournemouth, I believe. The final score was three to three and the XG was like three to three or something each as well. So we'll keep looking at that. But this is how I like to have my data frame set up. So as you can tell, I have all of the Southampton shots first. And then I have all the Bournemouth shots. It just makes it a little bit easier when we're going through the data frame to actually find the shots. But you don't have to have it set up like this. And it makes it easier to kind of filter by teams in the away team and the home team. But the next thing we're gonna do is we are just going to take all this information and we're gonna put it in lists. 
because it's a little bit easier if we put it in lists than trying to plot it just straight from the data frame I have found. So we're gonna create four lists and one we're gonna create for the away XG and we're just gonna create that list. And then as well, we're gonna create another one for the home XG in a blank list. And then another one for the minute so these are the four things that you need for an XG flow. You need to have the XG and as well as the minute that the shot took place. So I'll do that. And I like to start these with zero. So basically we're just starting, making our first instant zero so that everything will start at zero when we plot it. Otherwise, the actual flow wouldn't start until the first shot or the first time that a shot happened. So, what we're gonna do now is, the way we have this set up, we can find who the home team and the away team is. So we're just gonna create two new variables to find home and away teams. And we do this just, we're just gonna say h team equals, and then data frame team. And then we're gonna use the dot iloc. And our home team is actually Southampton, so the way I have it set up and the way that I coded it before to create this data frame, we just put the home team first and the away team second. So we're gonna say the first instance, which is position zero, is the home team, and then the away team, so A team. And then we're just gonna say dot iloc, and we're gonna get the very last instance down here. So just the, if you put negative one, that gets the very last instance in a data frame. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through, we're gonna use a for loop to go through this whole data frame. And basically we're just gonna say, if the team is equal to this variable team that we have right here, we are going to append it to our list that we've created up here. But if it's, and then we'll do that for the away team as well. So we'll just say for x, in range, then length, data frame, xg. So it's kind of a long thing, but we just need to run, make sure that it's going through the whole data frame, so all 30 rows that it has. And we'll put a colon right there, and then we're gonna say if our data frame, team, so in the team column, and then on x row is equal to a team, then we're going to say a underscore xg dot append. And then we want to append essentially what this is right here for xg. So we're just going to say data frame and then our xg column x. And then we're going to do the same thing for our min, our minute. So we're just going to say a underscore min dot append data frame xg, or sorry, min minute x. So essentially what this is gonna do is we'll just kind of go through what it's doing right now. So it's gonna run a for loop over this entire instance right here, this entire data frame, and it's going to go row by row and it's gonna say, okay, if the team is equal to our away team, which it's not right here, then it's gonna go all the way down to this Bournemouth row and it's gonna say, okay, if it's equal to Bournemouth, we're gonna take the XG, which is on this shot, 0.51, and we're going to append it to this away XG. So then after we append it, we're actually gonna have zero and then our list will be 0.51. But we're not gonna manually type everything because that's gonna take forever. So then what we're gonna do is we're, you can just copy this and then you just need to switch everything to say if team is equal to H team and then we just need to append it right here. So it's gonna go through each row and it's gonna say, okay, is this equal to the away team? No, is it equal to the home team? Yes. So we're gonna append the XG and the minute. And it's pretty simple, it just does that for every single row. And then when it's done, we can take a look at what this looks like now. So with that ran, so for example, we'll look at the AXG list. You run that and it's a list of all the expected goal values for the shots. 
Now you can see there's our zero, then there's our 0.51, and then there's our other ones, a lot of 2.51s, pretty close. And then there's one that's like 0.97. So basically all it did was just take all of these and put them in a big old list, which is very convenient for us because that's what we're actually gonna need to use. So the next thing that we need to do is for our expected goal. So you'll notice that if we plot this right now, it's going to look like it's not gonna be a, cumula a cumulative value of everything. So we're actually gonna create a function and this function, we're just gonna say define, and then we're gonna call this nums cumula cumulative sum, and then we're gonna create a variable called nums list. So the list that we're gonna be summing. And then this, basically all we're gonna do is we're going to return a list. So basically this list that we pass in, and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna sum the nums underscore list, so the list that we pass in. And essentially what this is gonna be doing is this is just going to, oops, I need to make sure I'm typing this correctly. I have it over on the side just to make sure that I type it correctly. So what, I'm just gonna type this real quick and I'll show you exactly what it's doing. Okay. So what this is doing right here is it's going to sum up, it's gonna go through our entire list that we pass into this function and it's going to sum up each instance. So it's gonna start here, it's gonna start at zero and then it's gonna sum the previous function or the previous instance in the list and then it's going to add that to the next one and that's gonna be what it is. So what it's gonna do is gonna take zero and then it's gonna add the previous one, which is nothing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next one. It's gonna be 0.51 and then it's gonna do plus zero and that's going to be what this is right here. And then on the next one, it's going to take this and then it's going to add this to it and then it'll become the new function essentially. So it'll make more sense if we just kind of run it real quick. So we'll create another list called a cumulative equals, and then we're gonna call the function nums underscore cumulative, cumulative sum, and then we'll pass in our a x g function, or list that we have, and then we wanna do the same thing for the home. So we're just gonna say home underscore cumulative equals nums underscore cumulative sum, and then we'll pass in our home XG. So this is just essentially gonna create the flow of the actual shots instead of just plotting each shot one by one. So we'll do this and then make sure you spell things right. But so we'll do this and so now we'll take a look at for example, the A cumulative compared to the AXG. So as we can see now, this is essentially everything. So this is each shot, but then this is each shot added together, if that makes sense. So as we can see, what this did is it just added everything together, and then this is your final XG right here, the 2.63. So now our last thing that we need to do is we just actually need to plot it. It's pretty simple to set up, we just need to make sure that we get it set up in this format of the 0.51 and everything. I'll plot the wrong one, or we'll, pro we'll plot this first and then we'll, I'll show you what happens if we plot this. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set up a matplotlib and we're going to say fig ax equals plt.subplots and then we'll call the fig size. So fig size, I like to just set it to equals 10 by five get a nice looking rectangle one. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna say fig.set. I like to set the face color so it's not just like white. So we're gonna say fig.set face color and this color right here, this one that I use is, I mean, you can use any color you want. I usually just like to use a color that uh, looks good as a background. So this one is kind of a blue gray color, I think is what it is. I'm not 
particularly good with my colors, but I don't know how you can be bad at it. So that's the color that we're gonna set up and then we will do ax.patch.set underscore face color. So this is gonna set this white, instead of being white, it's gonna set it as this color that we just did right here. So I'll copy that in, paste that. And so that is how it's looking so far. And then the next thing we need to do is really the only thing to create the actual plot is we're gonna use step plot. So we're just gonna say ax.step. So it's plotting on our ax and we're just gonna say ax.step. And we're gonna say x equals our min list. And then we're gonna say y equals our cumulative list, a underscore cumulative. So if we run that, so that is the XG for the away team right there. I can show you what it would look like if we just did the AXG. So if we just did AXG, then it would look like this where it's all over the place. So that's why we have to use the cumulative. Cumulative. And then we can just add another one where we say AX.step. And then we'll say X equals H underscore min and y equals h underscore cumulative. And that is it. So that's really all the basics that you need to do. I would recommend kind of doing a couple other things. For example, we wanna do the plt.x ticks. So this essentially, we're just gonna go zero comma 15, 30, 45, 65 or 60, 60, 75, and 90. So this is just the minutes that it happened in. So it goes like an actual match instead of how it had it. I think it was 20, 40, 60, 80. So it kind of is a little more representative of a match. And then as well, you can add labels. You can just say plt.x label, and you can set that as saying minute and then our plt.y label will set as xg. And so that is really the basics of doing this. It's kind of, there's a lot of different customization you can do with this. I'm not gonna go into the whole designing everything here because I think um, it should be something that you make your own, but essentially those are the basic steps of doing it. If you want, I recommend adding like a title up here and as well adding a little bit more information. Like if you wanted to add where the goals took place, you could add like a scatter plot on the goals. But, and then another thing that I recommend is on this step, on the step, we're actually gonna throw in a couple more values. So we're gonna say our, there's a where and so right now, as we're looking at it, it goes up every time there's a shot, but we actually want it to do something else where we say where equals post so that it goes over first and then it goes up where the shot is. So then it'll go over, up at shot, over, up at shot. So where it's not, so if we look at the orange right here, we can look and see how it looks right now. And then if we set the where equal to post, then it'll go over first. So it'll go over and then up, and then it stays there until the actual actual shot took place. So that's kind of, it makes it look better and it makes a lot more sense to have it the where equals post. So that is everything for this tutorial. Thank you for watching once again. If you haven't, be sure to hit like on the on the video as well as hit the subscribe button. I'll be coming out with more tutorials here in the future. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.